Hello, welcome to week two of Tangle with Tracy Ann. Thank you to all those people who headed over to Facebook to join my brand new group, Tangle with Tracy Ann. There is a link below this video if you'd also like to join us. Some of the members shared their work from last week and I'll show you a couple of those in a moment. My inspiration for this week came from project pack number nine, where Rick and Maria introduces to the Marcus Operandus. I will provide a link below this video where you can uh, find that to print it out. If you don't have a printer, I quickly walk you through how you can create the same thing, enough that you can follow this video. I chose a swirly kind of a string this week and headed over to tanglepatterns.com to choose some swirly kind of tangles. A couple of them did prove to be a little bit challenging, so I've practiced lots. I've broken them down and hopefully you'll find them easy to follow along. Here's a reminder of what we did last week with Crazy Huggins. And as I mentioned before, here's a little look at what some of you out there shared in my Facebook group. So a big thank you to ZN Tangle, Mita Krusel, Nola Gibson and Wendy Tan for sharing your beautiful work. Thank you again. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do. That way you don't miss out on future videos. Today we'll create a string using the Marcus Operandus and then I'll demonstrate how to draw Jokey by Kim Arts, Edipa by Mei Hua Teng, CZT, Scrolled Feather by Helen Williams and Lover by Sharon Caforio, CZT. Use the link below this video to print out your Marcus Operandus and if you don't have any Zendala tiles Find the centre of your Marcus Operandus and you can use that to get a measurement to draw your circle with a compass. If you don't have a printer, you can draw a circle, then mark off the quadrants. So if I draw a line one way, the other way needs to be square. So this ruler actually is square, if not use a set square. You can see I've drawn those squares in the center, but they're not necessary for this exercise. Then I'm going to mark each of these quadrants with a diamond. I need to now divide each quadrant into thirds. So I'm marking off every 30 degrees. I'll do that all the way around. Then join those lines with a ruler. Now I'll mark off each of these lines with a little diamond. That'll show me which lines I need to use to create the string for this tile. Before I start drawing my string, I'm going to create a border. So I'm going to use my finger to run along the edge of the tile. And depending on how close I hold my pencil to the end, it will depend on how thick my border will be. So find a comfortable spot, the distance you want your border to be. And you need to hold that quite steady and just guide the tile around using that finger that I showed you before to run along the edge of the tile and there you have a nice even border. Place your tile on the Marcus Operandus and mark off where I have those diamonds. Now I'm only going to mark off the left hand side of this today. I 
I'll be using a second Zendala tile to trace around. Now that bottom marking where on your Marcus operandus was a number four, I'm going to be drawing for that each time. The first marking won't count because it's within the border. So I'll move on to the second one and draw only inside the tile, not where the border is. Again, match up with that bottom marking and move on to the next one. Trace from one to the other. If you decide not to use a border, just draw straight from the edge. Carefully match up each marking. And this will be my very last one. And that's the string I wanted to create. Nice swirly pattern. I'm just going to use an eraser to get rid of those little marks within my border. I've also decided that I don't really want that first line. So if you haven't drawn it already, leave that one off. Instead, I'm, I'll just rub that one out and I'll divide that space with a little wiggly, wavy line. I'll fill this first section in with the pattern Jokey by Kim Arts. I start with a spiral going from the border right up to the edge of that first curve line and then draw little almost echoes, not going all the way around and get gradually smaller. I'll now draw a second spiral coming from that little wiggly line I drew and this time as I gradually do those echo lines I'll follow that wavy line and then add one third spiral and then I'll do my little echoes leading up towards the point. Now section off from the edge of that curve to the bottom of it and draw some little stripes. Then turn the tile and in that section there I'll draw another spiral and some echoing lines and then one more spiral, each spiral getting slightly smaller. In between these spirals I'm adding some orbs and a few floating orbs coming out from that corner. I'm using a sketchbook here to show you a couple of different ways of drawing the next pattern and you can choose which one you'd like to do. So this is Edipo by Mei Hua Teng, CZT, and it starts with a little curl. I've drawn a pencil line in the middle to represent a kind of stalk and that will guide the direction. And you'll notice as I draw each spiral, it comes from the very top of the spiral below it. Each of these spirals is facing outwards from the stalk. Now, take from the outside of that spiral, draw a line down to the point. And then from the other edge, Draw another line and then join it. It looks like a little bit of a scroll. I'm going to go to the same point from this second one. From the outer edge, each of the spiral and then add that little bit in the centre. So this next one, I'm going where the join is, up to the edge of that next spiral 
and then to that same join, draw a line down and finish the scroll. Again from the outer edge of a spiral down to that intersection, draw another line down into that same intersection and finish the scroll. Now this is um, your basic Oedipa and it, in itself it, it looks quite elegant. For today I'm going to do a variation of that. So I'll just draw the spirals again with pencil to show you how this works. So I'll trace up but instead of going around that curve I'm putting like a leaf shape at the top, a pointy end. So trace up, veer off from that circle and add the leaf shape. Again go up, add your pointy bit and scroll around. Each time I'm coming from the top of those curls. It might help to just practice this a little bit so you get the hang of how to draw these little pointy bits. So now I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time just drawing it without the pencil line. And you can see what shape I'm having to create. So coming from the top of that curl, create that top of the leaf shape and scroll around. Again, with each scroll is facing out from the stem. Go back to the bottom and join that outer edge of the scroll down to the bottom point. Again, on the second one we're taking it to that same beginning section. But the next one, we'll use that join between the first two as a point to draw the line from the outer edge to the join. Same again, the intersection to the each of the outer edges of your scroll. These almost look like a bunch of lilies. Okay, so we'll now do this on our tile. I'm going to divide the section firstly with a curved line and that will represent that stalk. It'll give the direction of where we're going to draw our tangle. Starting from the bottom of the stalk, draw our first little curl. Remember, create that leaf shape if you're doing this side of the pattern. If not, you could just do a scroll around. Come from the top. Draw the top of that leaf shape and scroll around and keep doing this so that each of our scrolls is facing outward from that inner stem. Go back to the bottom and now join that outer edge down to the beginning of the stalk to form that little scroll. The second one goes back to that bottom corner and then when we go from here we're always connecting that outer edge into the intersection between the previous two shapes. A 
I'm going to leave this next section for now and work on that outer section. But first, this is the tricky one, I'll show you how to do it on the sketch pad. This pattern's called Scrolled Feather by Helen Williams and she does some beautiful elegant designs. I've penciled in a wavy line. This pattern has some similarities to Oedipa but we're using more of an S shape for the scrolls and it's really important you do this. And this time we're scrolling in towards the stalk instead of out. Now we're coming from the middle of that scroll and the mistake I made when I was practicing um, by dividing that line I was coming straight out from the line like we did with the last pattern and it created some very unusual angles and just didn't work so forget that really concentrating on creating these S shapes and I find it's easier to do this by instead of coming out from what we've drawn before trace that line upwards so we're getting that nice S shape and as we're curling inwards notice that each time I'm going on either side of that pencil line that I drew in the beginning now don't come straight out from that line Make sure you've got that nice up the stalk, make that nice S shape and down, round into a curl. Again, up that stem and round into a curl. One last one. As I said before, with Oedipa, we did our scrolls facing outwards. outwards from that inner stem. With this pattern with each time facing inwards. So the curl goes in towards that stem. To finish off our pattern, similar to the other one, going from the outer edge down to the beginning of our stem. Now here's how it gets a little bit different. Where that intersection is, we, we're going to join to the edge of that scroll above, but take it through where that inner scroll is. So within each section, we're just going to do some lines. And as you're drawing these contour lines, draw as if you're going behind that middle scroll. Going to the next edge, from that top outer part down to that intersection and through that middle scroll. So join them up and the contour lines. Again, going as if you're drawing behind that middle scroll. Some of these get a little bit curved in funny directions. So as you're drawing these connections from the intersections up to that outer edge of the scroll, sometimes I find it's easier to draw it in the air first. So find the point where you're going to start at the top of the scroll down to that intersection and remember we go behind that middle scroll so take it down and make a gentle curve here then add contour lines you'll find these kind of blend from one edge shape to the other curve on the other side. Okay, let's take it to our tile. Begin with a light wavy line that just guides where the pattern is. You could do, if you feel confident, you can do without the line, but I find it helps me. So draw our first S with a curl at the top. 
trace up that stalk to form another S and do our curl facing in towards the center of that stalk. Again, go up that center line in an S shape to form our curl. At the top, touch that last curl onto the one before it. Go back to the beginning and draw our other lines from the outer end of the scroll down to that point. The first two are easy. Okay, on the next one, remember we've got to go from that outer edge down through that first scroll to the intersection. On the other side the same thing but to make it easier it's better to draw in our contour lines that way we don't get a little bit confused with what we've drawn so take your time do it nice and slowly and remember once we get past those first two as we draw the contour lines Draw them as if we're going behind that first curl. Okay, so over to the other side. I'm going from that intersection up to that outer edge. Trace it in the air first so you know where your curve's going. And then drawing the contour lines again. Now I'm going to go back and add a few little scrolls. Just uh, weight them at the end. 
just little wispy lines and they're, they can overlap just coming out here and there doesn't matter which direction and do the same on the other side this is a tricky pattern but it's so beautiful it's worth persevering and uh, getting it right when Helen demonstrates how how she does it she starts from the other end I just find it easier to grow up than come down but that's up to you whichever way you find easier for the final pattern again I'm going to divide the section with a wavy line just to guide me in the direction I want to go this is Lover by Sharon Caforio and it's a series of hearts so you might be wondering why I'm doing hearts when I said we're doing curly patterns but I'll do some curls coming out from these hearts later on now we're just going to draw some hearts sprouting out from each other you can vary the size some can sprout out from the sections between each other so where two hearts join together or you might even go from that little dip in the top of the heart so just fill that area varying the size and the direction of the hearts until you get right to the end I'm going to go back in and add some lines from the base of each heart I'll also add two little curves along the top of the heart now add the curly bits just little curls a little bit like what we did out of the scrolled feather but we're not weighting the top then I'm going to go back along each of the curls and add some beading Now to add some shading.
I love these tangles, they're all very elegant. So add your initials. And here are some variations that I did. On this tile, I added Flower Vine by Susan Punt. And on this one, you can see I used the original Oedipa. And in that bottom corner, the tangle is called Ojo by Lara William CZT. Is a black tile using only Oedipa and Jokey. Of course, you can use any tangles you like. The important thing is have fun. They're all beautiful tangles. How did you go? If you found these challenging, you can always substitute them with another easier tangle. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do that. Head over to the Facebook group and share what you've done. I'd love to see what you created. And until next week, stay safe and bye for now. You'll find links to some of my other videos on the screen. So you can click on those and don't forget, hit that subscribe button.